Why is the United States a country? Is it just inertia? Why are we still a thing? I was finishing up one of the videos I did the other day on aspects of our new civil war. And I was thinking about all the things that I had focused on that divide the country today that didn't divide the country even back in 1861. And it suddenly dawned on me. If all these things were true, and I believe that they are, why are we still together? Why are the states still united? Why does this country continue to exist? Is all we have going for us really inertia? Think about it. If you look at American history in, in its entirety, we weren't always united. As colonies, we weren't united. Although there were several attempts to unite the colonies at times, they never worked. Even during the revolution, as we fought the British, we weren't united. We were in a confederation. And that confederation continued after the war, right up until the Constitutional Convention in Philadelphia. Now, admittedly, we didn't prosper under the Articles in many ways. So we formed this new constitution setting up a federal national republic. Now, Americans, under their new federal republic, still had one big problem, slavery, the proverbial elephant in the room, and that did divide them. But in most other aspects of life, there was a consensus. There was a political economic consensus. They believed in republican government, market capitalism, free trade as defined in the 18th century, not as defined today in the 21st. They read the same philosophers. They read the same literature. They read Shakespeare. They shared a common religion. They were mostly all Christians of one denomination or another. They were all products of, of the Enlightenment in their thinking. And all these things united Americans at the time. Today, none of that's true. Slavery is not an issue anymore, in the sense that it continues to exist as an institution, but it's still an issue of debate, right to reparations and things like that. And in addition to that, you have another deeply divisive moral issue, abortion, that divides the country. But if you look at all the things that used to, and at the time of the adoption of the Constitution, unite us, all those things I mentioned, just mentioned, uh, you know, religion, politics, economics, literature, product of the Enlightenment, all those things today are not elements of consensus, are not elements of agreement. They're elements of division. Literature, they're all white racists. Economics, white racists. Philosophers, white racists. They all need to be replaced. Their statues need to be torn down. All this needs to be repudiated, destroyed, canceled. That's where we're at today. So the fundamental question is, if all these things divide us, what unites us? Do you have an answer? Can you think of something that unites us other than inertia? Other than the fact, well, we've been together for two and a half centuries, so we ought to stay together. But why? I mean, the purpose of the federal union was to bring people together who basically thought alike on most issues. We no longer think alike. Why should we still be together? Again, other than inertia, the fact that we are. And that's a big question. The United States has always been a nation held together by concepts, by ideas. That's what makes you an American. We're not like Poland, where, you know, 90... 5% or so of the Polish people are Polish, ethnically Polish. They speak Polish, mostly Roman Catholics. Or the Japanese, who are overwhelmingly ethnically Japanese. We've never been like that. Right from the start, we were diverse. You know, if you look at white and black, it was 80%, 20%. The country was blacker at the time of the constitutional adoption than it is today. But even among the white population, you had Scots, you had 
English, you had the Irish, you had Welsh, you had Swedes, you had French, you had uh, Germans, you had some Dutch. All these different people were there. But they all accepted. They all believed in the same things. They had a common heritage. They had a common Western culture. All these ideas that pulled them together and held them together. We don't have any of those things today. We, we barely have a language. We don't have religion. We're even more ethnically diverse than we used to be. So what holds us together? If we don't accept a common set of ideas as to what makes and defines an American, is there really an America? I guess that's what I'm asking. Is there an America? Why are we still united? So what is to be done? What are our options? Option one is just to allow inertia to remain in place and just to keep going as we are doing now. But we know what's happening. I've seen it. I'm 68 years old. You know, I started college in 1969. I've watched it happen. You know, the educational establishment in this country from kindergarten up through graduate school. Push the idea, challenge the ideas and concepts on which this country was founded. Now, that's fine. You can challenge those concepts. But in a country that is bound together by concepts and not by ethnicity, not by religion, not by anything else like Poland or Japan, when you destroy those concepts, when you undermine those concepts, you're basically destroying the things that bind us together. What happens when those things are totally destroyed? You can see what happens. We can see the beginnings of it now. We're in a, what I called the other day, a cold civil war. So allowing things to just continue as they are, we're headed for a full-blown civil war because nothing's going to change. These people aren't going to adjust their attitudes. They're not going to change what they do. Progressives never back off. Progressives never admit failure. They either throw money more, more money at it, and then they refuse to back down. They always double down. That's what they're famous for. They'll double down. They'll work at it harder. They'll push harder. When you can't get what you want in the streets in 2017, protesting the election of Donald Trump, you go harder. You go from big protests to big riots. That's doubling down. That's what they do. And we can expect the same things to continue. So that's not a, a long-term solution. The second option is civil war. And I'm not saying we choose civil war, but we're going to end there anyway. Why not just get it over with? If we're going to go that route, let's do it. What are we waiting for? I mean, the country's coming apart. The country's coming unglued. Just admit it. Go with it. Accept the fact. We're already in a low-level civil war. That's the reality. And you can accept that. If you don't want to accept it and you just go with the inertia option, you're going to end up there anyway. Because the left will continue to undermine the fixtures that hold us together until there are none left, and then we're going to end up in civil war. So that one and two both lead to the same place. It's just whether you get there sooner or later. That leads us to the third option. Recognize what's happening. Recognize that the concepts that once held us together are shot. They're gone. They've been destroyed. Sit down and negotiate a separation. Break the country in two. Three. Who knows? It sounds kind of far-fetched, but it's going to happen by force. Or it's going to happen by negotiation. But you negotiate a separation. I don't know geographically what the country would look like. And of course, left and right are mixed all over the country. And you just set up programs to move people. If you're a liberal living somewhere in Texas, you know, you move to California. The government gives you enough money to rent a truck or whatever. I don't know. Move people around. One called ethnic cleansing. You can call it, I don't know, intellectual cleansing. What's the third option? 
The third option is negotiate. Dissolution of a country. Break it up. The things that held us together, the ideas that made us Americans, have been destroyed by the intellectual class in this country. They've cut the, the things that hold us together. So let's negotiate a separation. They can all go over here. The rest of us can go over there. You divide the country. You provide programs to move people around to get them, you know, the liberals out of a heavily conservative area and vice versa. And you develop two new countries. Let them have their ideas that they can pursue. They can head off toward the road toward Venezuela. And we can go off on our own, the rest of us, and have our own lives with a bunch of people who believe in the same things. And they can have their country with people who believe in the same things because we don't believe in the same things anymore. As I said, there's nothing to hold us together. We don't have that ethnic collective context to keep people together. We don't even have a cultural context to keep us together. There's nothing left other than inertia, as I've said several times. I know this sounds drastic to do these things and to think about these things. But I don't, I don't see what the alternative is. Unless there's some way to reestablish a, some sort of political, moral, economic consensus in this country, there's no reason for it to stay together. And the education establishment in this country is not going to allow that. Quite the opposite. They're going to continue to destroy that consensus. That's their policy. That's their aim. They don't understand what they're doing. They don't understand in fully the implications of what they're doing. But that's what they're committed to doing. So I don't see how we can change that. We're much like the country on the eve of the Civil War, although even more divided. You had two visions of a future. You had the vision of a future in the North, which was very different than the vision of a future in the South. Those two visions didn't mesh. And what they ended up with, they either had to separate politically through some sort of agreement, which didn't happen, or they were going to fight. And we have fought a bloody civil war. You know, until very recently, of all the people who died in American wars, more people died in the civil war than all our other wars combined. I think the, the death rate in the other wars is slightly going above the Civil War now, thanks to some of our more recent forays into the Middle East. But the Civil War was the central, bloodiest story of American history. And that's where we're headed. In many ways, we're already there in the early stages of it. And unless we can change the dynamic of what's happening in this country... That's where we're going to end up. Or we have to sit down and negotiate some sort of separation before that happens. I know this isn't what a lot of you want to hear. <laughs> it's not something I enjoy saying. But I'll just, you know, repeat. You know, I'm asking a simple question. If you look at the left today and the right today, what holds us together? What binds us together? What are the common political, economic, philosophic, religious, ethical things that hold us together today? Of all the things that held us together in 1790, to use a round off date, how many of those things still exist today? And if the answer is none, then, you know, I ask the question. Why are we still together? Why should we still be together? Do we want to negotiate our way out of this mess? Do we want to separate before it gets bad? Or do you want to wait until we start killing each other? That to me is the option. You can do A or B. And I'd like to hear from you in comments. You know, what do you think? Am I... Have I gone too far? Am I painting too bleak a picture? Are there elements of hope on the horizon? 
and you know, leave a comment. Let me know. I'd like to hear from you. Because this is big stuff we're talking about. Because if there is another full-blown civil war in this country, it's not going to be civil compared to the last civil war. The last civil war, 1861, 1865, was civil compared to most civil wars because we shared so many ideas. Because the soldiers of the North and the South, other than the issue of slavery and their accents, weren't all that different. So they didn't massacre each other when it was over. When Lee surrendered, Grant didn't have him executed. He didn't have his soldiers rounded up and shot and dumped into mass graves like they do after other civil wars, Russian Civil War, Chinese Civil War, even the Spanish Civil War. Ours was a very civil, civil war because we were united by ideals. But if we get into another fighting civil war, this time it's going to be very different because the two sides don't agree with one another. We've seen the videos of of uh, you know Antifa people beating up old men or people going down the street and punching old ladies, knocking them off their walkers. I mean, this is uncivil behavior, but that's where it's gotten in this country. In many ways, the left and the right are beginning to hate each other. That's a fact. And if this gets unleashed into a civil war, that's going to carry over into how we do that fighting. And it's going to be, it's going to make the first civil war, which was our bloodiest war, look like child's play. So this is a dangerous position we find ourselves in. And maybe the best thing to do is to try to talk our way out of it. Just withdraw, separate, let them go their way. We can go our way because we're going to do it that way, we'll end up doing it by force. And whichever side would win, and I think I know which side would win, it's going to be a god-awful, bloody mess. So let me know what you think. I'm looking forward to some really interesting comments on this one. Like I said, uh, leave a comment, hopefully. Leave a like for the video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, hit the notification button, subscribe to the channel. And until the next time, I am out of here.